I just wanted to know if you, um, as far as waiting on the Lord, if you could bring us into your experience, like what's going on with your thoughts, yeah. what's going on with your body, what does that look like really practically for us? So we can do that with you as well. Yeah, no, that's a great question, man. I um, When I first started, and again, for me, others may not say this, but for me, it was the hardest posture to learn. I went to Bible college, Assemblies of God, Brownsville, Pensacola. We were like, we knew all about shakalaka, tongues. The word, like prayer night was every other night. It felt like grabbing flags to nations, just ah, crying out for the nations, you know. <laughs> and so stillness was unheard of. I knew worship, the word, praying in tongues, just wild, Lindo Cooley worship, praise, high, high praise. But I'm like, stillness, I honestly did not know it until I heard a teaching from a powerful prophet, I think over in the Himalayas. Um, in 2006, I was at a conference in Arizona, a man handed me a teaching called Waiting on the Lord. I was like, what is this? They don't, didn't teach me in this Bible college. I knew how to pray in tongues, the word, all this. And I begin to dig into it, and he really breaks down by Revelation Isaiah 40, and starting to realize that waiting is just that waiting. Amen. Like literally. <laughs> like doing no thing else, not even lifting your pinky, being still. And knowing that he's God. Because a lot of us will be like, we're going through the mall, checking emails and texts and spinning through and looking at sales. And we're like, I'm just waiting on the Lord. He's going to speak. You know, I'm just waiting on the Lord. And it's like, no, you're not waiting on anything but the biblical way. And so I said, man, I'm having this. I did not even know this was another doorway to know him. It's all throughout the word. So I remember I first locked up and uh, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going for this thing, man. I'm sitting there, 15 minutes passed by. I thought it was an hour. I was like, this is not working. I, my mind, thoughts are everywhere. <laughs> Try it again and the next day. All of a sudden, I'm just sitting there. I hear a motorcycle ride by. I always love telling the story. You know, my mind's like, that sounded like a crotch rocket. And I'm like, my brother was really good at those. And you know, I'm just, I'm gone. I'm like, he could ride wheelies. And I'm just, 20 minutes later, I'm just, phew, I'm somewhere else in my mind. And so it took a long time. It was kind of like a kite. I had to keep reeling it back in and aligning it to the wind of heaven. And then it would get off into my soulish thoughts and I'd pull it back. And I would say time um, really helped. But what I'll do now is you try and still, not only your body, because let's be honest, you can be totally, it looks like this when I'm waiting in stillness. I get a, a comfortable chair or sit up in my bed, my headboard, something like this. But don't lay down, you'll for sure fall asleep. <laughs> he didn't say fall asleep in the Lord, although I love dreams, but it's wait on the Lord. Some people do their knees, which I love that. I just can't do it. My knees start hurting. I'm a bigger build, you know, my joints, and then I can't even focus on anything. I'm like, um, but I love that. I would do that or on your face. But so I'll sit there because I'm wanting to posture myself for hours if, if, if the time permits and find a comfortable spot, but not so much. I'll drink coffee, so I'm alert, sober. For me, some of you don't need that. And um, especially if it's the early morning watch, though. But let's be honest, I'm sitting here literally like this for hours. Just... And great, I'm still, but if I'm not still internally, it's still wasted. And don't be hard on yourself because it'll take time, but you want all of who you are, mind, body, soul, your, you know, everything, your, your, your thought life. And so what helps often internally is I'll find a, a fixed point on him from within, and this is, I know sometimes gets a bad rap for like meditation and stuff, but biblically the true way is totally a gateway into him. I'll just imagine him, just like we do in worship, you guys see the Lord. David said, I set the Lord always before me. And so I'll, I'll and sometimes from other experiences where I've seen him, I can use those and, and envision, just posture my mindset on him. Um, and use it as a doorway, I'll just stay on him with that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, the, the, the Catholics get a bad rap for this, but some of the old mystics, like the deep ones, man, you can read up on them, some of the deep ones that knew the Lord. Some of them, man, there's one of, uh, if, can I go here? It's a little bit, okay. I don't wanna get things in trouble over here, but, but I love stuff like this. There's this uh, Saint Joseph of Cupertino, actually where Apple is at in California, it's Cupertino, California, it's, it's where he's, he's named after. They called him the Flying Friar. Because he would literally, you just mentioned Jesus, he started floating off the ground, just caught up in a rapture, like with him, he'd ascend in the presence. He was lost in the Lord. He lived in the presence of the Lord. You start singing psalms, anything about the Lord, he was so caught up with him. And, um, but that was one thing they would use that was really imagery and just focus on the Lord and get lost. And what it does is it gives your soul a kind of guidepost to stay back on because you'll start veering off. Just simple, like, man, Jesus. I remember one time I was focusing on his crucifixion one morning because I wanted to 
know him, know him in his sufferings and his resurrection power. And it started simply as thoughts, what I thought he might look like crucified. And I stayed on it, stayed on it. My, my mind, I'd stay back on it. My mind, stay back on it. Before I knew it, I went to one of the most powerful encounters to date, where I was literally, it, was, it turned into like visions, images in the spirit. Because what happens is, he sees your hunger posture and expectancy and you're aligning your soul for him. And then all of a sudden you hit a doorway where the spirit takes over. And what a lot of people don't realize is the prophetic, the same way you see things in your imagination, the spirit uses and projects it from your internal eye. So right now, I can say everybody, you know, imagine, close your eyes and imagine, you know, a red apple and you can see one. But the, the problem is when it's anointed by the spirit and the spirit does it and projects it on your inner eye, then it's spirit now, it's not just soul. That's the difference between soul, dreams, spirit, dreams, and all this. But when it takes over like that, and then all of a sudden, I was, it was these flashes I could never conjure up in my own mind. And before I knew it, I was crucified with him, face to face. Spikes ran through my hand and his, and I'm just crucified with Christ. It was blown me away, blew me away. I came out of it wrecked, full out wonder. I won't go into this, another wild one. But, um, but anyway, I would just say start. And, and sometimes just simple. Some of you may just, John the beloved, head on his chest, intimacy, or shepherd, just king, just him. He's the doorway. And I need you. And I'd say humility and gratitude, man. I'll start going there right now, like just, just because uh, you'll see him. Just like, and I can tell when I get, get into his presence because you're so thankful, because it's him. He's the greatest prize that you ever could access, ever this side of heaven and in heaven and humility because lowliness, man, is what takes you in, I feel like. And obviously you enter his courts with thanksgiving, but you see Abram fell face first when God came. There's a lowly posture. Like I, I, like, I need you. You're everything. I can't even go throughout today halfway successfully if you don't just touch me and breathe and speak. Your presence is everything. And, and uh, you're in that still state, man, he'll just come. So, so I'd say some of the most powerful experiences I've ever had have been in stillness. While you had tongues, man, I can't overemphasize that enough and worship in that as well. But um, you always say that stillness, like legit time and the internal, you know, some of the basics of just staying, staying on him. Adoration, my good friend Eric normally hits it from that angle, which would be adoring from within. It's still that posture of just him. You're everything, you know. If you're blessed by this video, go ahead and subscribe to this channel for more amazing content.